I have a second channel, Cube Compium DDX. Hey everybody, here we have this HP Pavilion system in for service. It's a Pavilion Magnesium Gray Edition P6654Y system from 2010. This computer here definitely goes back many years with me. It's actually one of my neighbor's computers. I actually got to unbox and set this machine up back in either 2010 or 2011. I actually had the video up on YouTube. So feel free to have a look. And back then it was me bashing uh, the uh, OEMs back then for preloading a bunch of junk software. But the sad thing is, Microsoft now does it with, uh, of course, Windows 10 and Windows 11. So, this computer is still 100% bone stock. It still works. Um, it's just in need of getting upgraded to be more up to date with the times. It still has its factory AMD Athlon 2 630 quad core processor, 4 gigs of DDR3 memory, 70 gig hard drive. It has integrated Radeon graphics. <clears throat> it currently has Windows 10 on it. So, of course, uh, had to be upgraded to Windows 10 because Windows 7 um, lost support back in 2020. So, But you're gonna have a look at it. I mean, this thing I'd say it's pretty meant for its age. I mean, it's 12 years old now. So especially when you look inside the thing. I mean, there's a little bit of dust in here, but it's not not bad at all. Um, I must say this thing this thing has been very well uh, kept. It's uh, you can see everything looks nice and clean in here. I think I've worked on it maybe a couple of times. There's our HP motherboard. The system still works fine. It's just uh, slow. <laughs> so what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be going through it and just making sure things like the hard drive and stuff are okay. Um, my intention is to save the hard drive to use as a data drive. Um, I'm still on the fence between this. I'm, I'm still on the fence between doing a data drive and a SSD for the boot drive, or just simply going with a, like a one terabyte SSD, since solid state drives have come way down in price um, so yeah we have a socket AM3 motherboard with the the uh, integrated Radeon graphics not sure which chipset it has probably a 700 series um, probably probably like a 7 if I were to guess what 760G 780G what it was back in 2010 maybe an 800 series chipset I don't know um, Motherboard has a, uh, what I like to call a laptop PCIe slot for the uh, Wi-Fi adapter. And I have to wonder if this motherboard would support other kinds of uh, PCIe cards in that slot. And of course, we got the uh, got the full-length uh, PCI Express graphics card slot there, as well as three single-lane uh, PCI Express slots. And motherboard has four DIMM slots. Two of them are taken up. Again, still have the stock four gigs of memory. Come on the back. You can see this machine. It has um, DVI and VGA outputs. No HDMI. It's got the, uh, I'd say the premium audio back there. Again, 100% fully stock machine. And in some of my videos where you see me do uh, rebuilds and stuff, you may see where I re will reuse these uh, Best Tech power supplies. Like for, for example, this one here is a Best Tech HX25012Z. This power supply, the design overall has not really changed much since what 2002, 2003. Um, this power supply ranged from computers powering Pentium 4s back, of course, in the early 2000s. HP continued to use this power supply up through the early 2010s. I mean this is a 2010 computer and I should note the connections on this power supply have not changed. In fact HP had to use not one but two Molex to SATA adapters to adapt this power supply to hook up to the optical drive as well as a hard drive. 
these power supplies, um, I'd, I'd say, I mean, aside from some capacitor issues, I mean, these are actually pretty dang reliable power supplies. Um, and I mean, I have, for example, let's see, one, two, three, three of them up there, along with some other different units. But, um, power supply in this one still has all the original capacitors, they all look fine. No bulging caps. It seems that when you keep the computer in a cool running environment, uh, the caps don't typically give you all that much trouble. It's when uh, it's when you put these things under like serious loads uh, that, of course, you can cause the caps to fail. You put these things under serious loads, and you have a lot of heat in the system, particularly heat in the system. That makes the biggest difference. So that. Um, what is that, Athlon 2 630 quad? Yeah, quad core CPU. I have to wonder what the uh, TDP is of that processor. Not sure if it's 65 or 95 watts, but um, power supply has um, 14 amps on this 12 volt rail. So back in the day, if you wanted to put a graphics card in this thing, if you want to put a graphics card in it nowadays, um, you'd have to you'd have to upgrade the power supply more than likely you didn't you would need something that would be able to put out just a bit more 12 volt power depending on what kind of graphics card you throw in there but um so what we're going to be doing with this machine is we're going to be giving it the Ryzen treatment so I've upgraded a handful of OEM systems over the years to the Ryzen 3 and Ryzen 5 G series APUs um, ranging from the Ryzen 3 2200G up to the Ryzen 5 5600G well I mean I just recently did my own co computer build using the 5600G but I've did a handful of uh, OEM system upgrades using those APUs and they work great for stuff like this um, I think it's probably safe to say that the new APU may pull less power than this older quad core processor and it will put out a lot more performance in both graphics and processor so we'll be doing pretty much the same hardware as I did in the recent cube computer porta cube build using a Ryzen 5 5600G APU on an SROC A520M-HDV motherboard we'll get 16 gigs of RAM and I'm thinking seriously about doing a one terabyte M.2 PCIe solid state drive to replace that hard drive altogether. Um, we'll retain the existing DVD drive, retain the existing power supply, it works fine. So, um, we'll be this upgrade um, would cost probably about $320 roughly. So, $320 to replace. I mean, this is for the cost of the hardware, at least right now, um, to replace the motherboard, the processor, the RAM, and the storage. So, I'll be posting a video up on YouTube when I do the upgrade on this system. And I must say, these HP systems from this era, the cases are absolutely fantastic for, for doing custom builds and rebuild because... They have the motherboard oriented, oriented sort of like how a BTX system is. You can see I'm actually accessing the computer from the right side when you look at the front. The right side rather than the left side. Like for example that system down there you can see the door is on the left side whereas on this one the door is on the right side. And because of that the motherboard is placed upside down with the processor being toward the bottom that's generally the coolest part of the system is down toward the bottom and also if you have a graphics card in this system the graphics card heatsink will be facing up and that's that's generally a lot better and that was one of the that was one of the advantages of the BTX form factor back in the day was to have the graphics card and stuff like that facing with, with the uh, heat sinks fa you know, facing up because we know heat rises so I'm definitely looking forward to uh, upgrading this machine to uh, be a whole lot more relevant with the times. I must say, 
I was yesterday I went and picked this thing up from our neighbor and he said he said it still works but it uh you know it, it ticks me off every time I sit down and try to use it and I'm using a different word than what he said <laughs> so we're going to fix that we're going to uh, make this thing a bit more relevant and also in case you're wondering you know we got that Athlon 2 630 quad core processor yeah that's probably where it's going to be going the plexi so in the motherboard out of this I'm going to probably be using it to do a a, uh, a rebuild I got a second HP um, uh, like a 2004 era HP computer case out in the building the same as what that Core 2 Quad Q6600 build is in may do sort of a uh, a somewhat sleeper HP build who knows so anyways hope y'all enjoyed this video thanks for watching well everybody that wraps up for this video and I hope you enjoyed it if you did, please like the video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the computer channel and be sure to tick that bell so you get notified when new videos are posted. Also, don't forget I have a whole lot of other interesting videos here on the channel to check out. And also, in addition, I have a second channel, CubeComp MTDX, where I have all sorts of other videos not exactly related to technology. Links to the channels are available at the end of this video. Again, I thank you for your support and thanks for watching this video.